You're watching TVC Breakfast. Now it all begins with the mind and how you process information. Emotional intelligence has to do with recognizing your emotions, others' emotions, the ability to manage your emotions, and an ability to influence and manage the emotions of others. It can also help you to connect with, feel, with your feelings, turn intention into action, and make informed decisions about what matters most to you. So why does emotional intelligence really matter in family relationships? Joining us now is social transformation strategist Abiola Cham Salami. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. A compliment of the season. Yes, thank very you. interesting topic. Mm -hmm. Emotions, I, get, I was just reading about emotions, emotions, mm -hmm. emotions, emotions. Please tell us, uh, what does it take to be emotionally intelligent? Okay, it's about, it's about developing the capacities to manage our emotions, to control our emotions and understand the emotions of other people we relate with and with our understanding of the emotions, manage the relationship and develop effective relationships with people. Mm. Uh, that, that's the sum total of emotional intelligence. And especially as it applies in the family, there are a number of things that, I mean, you and I, almost every one of us, we've experienced within our families. There are issues like one of them on the top of the list <laughs> is having people take other people for granted. Yeah, you even know? taking okay. your stuff, uh, yeah. especially when you have younger sisters. Uh, exactly. Uh, well, I think you are saying something to someone <laughs> out there. I think that's what you're doing. But it's all right. Sister, sister is okay. We get it. You know, and, and taking people for granted. Um, the other one is entitlement mentality uh, that pe family members could have. Mm -hmm. So this happened between parents and children, among siblings, you know, even between spouses as well. So emotional intelligence is saying that we need, it's important for us to develop this capacity so that these people that are very important to us, we cultivate effective relationships with them. And number one on the list in cultivating emotional intelligence is about first seeking understanding that people don't care how much you know um, until they know how much you care. Mm. So the fact that you are a sibling or you are a family member doesn't mean you should always, always push your rights alone without thinking about your obligations. Every relationship mm. has both rights and obligations, mm, okay. but we are quick to talk about what we deserve, what people should right. do for us, and we don't even necessarily pay attention to what we can do for the other people. How did we get to this point? Because we're in a society where the elder ones are more revered than the younger ones. Of course, when you have your kids, you train the younger, the younger ones to give respect and regard to the elder ones, but you don't train the elder ones to give regard to the younger ones? How mm. did we come about this Great mindset? question. Great question. Emotional intelligence is saying that everybody deserves to be respected. The older ones respect the younger ones. The younger ones respect the older ones. And respect, I mean, my name is Abiola, so you can get where I came from, I mean, from, from <laughs> Nigeria. Respect <laughs> is not necessarily the fact that somebody calls you sir or mm -hmm. ma or in local Uncle, parlance, brother, uh, brother or <laughs> auntie, all of those things. Now. It is imp it's an important component of respect, yes, but that is not all about it. Because we even pay more attention to the body language, uh, rather much more than what is being said, because I can call you uncle, which is with the words of my mouth, which but my researchers have said to us, professionals have told us that only 7% of, of our communication is about what we say. The other 93% has to do with my tone and my body language. So in respect in emotional intelligence, I can call you uncle or call you sir, but my tone and my body language should follow. Mm -hmm. And it is both ways. So from the younger to the older, from the older to the younger, it's saying that every human being deserves to be respected. Uh, what we found as well is, so you now have cases where the younger people are demanding respect mm. yeah. from the older ones. But what I've also found is that these younger people demanding respect from older ones, they actually, don't, they actually don't give respect <laughs> to the older ones. Well, I did that. You know, I, you I, did, did, I did, <laughs> demanded respect from older ones. But I, I'm afraid we might have to leave it here. Abiola Champ, Salami, thank you so much thank for teaching for us me. how to be emotionally intelligent. Thank you for having me. Compliments. Thank you. Well, that's the question posed to us here. Of course, joining us now is globally acclaimed performance coach, Abiola Cham Salami. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So I'd like you to answer that question now. A <laughs> difficult boss in a place of work, how does emotional intelligence help you work with such a person? It's a hard task, mm, that, believe mm, me. Mm. So how do you handle that kind of situation? Okay. Um, the first thing to do is to remember the word empathy. 
Empathy says seek first to understand before you are understood. There are many times when we classify bosses as difficult, and it doesn't necessarily mean that the person is difficult. It's perhaps the person is making some demands from us, uh, a demand that we are probably not comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And so when the person is demanding that you deliver a particular job within a particular time frame, and you think that you cannot deliver it within that mm -hmm. time frame, and the person is always asking you to deliver within that time frame, we could brand the person as difficult. Mm -hmm. So the first uh, thing into managing whoever we've branded difficult is to seek to understand the person before we are understood. So am I delivering this project to time? Maybe the time is the complaint or the constraint. Am I delivering this project within the budget available? Okay. Maybe the money is the, time, uh, is the constraint the or the complaint. Am I carrying other stakeholders along in this project? Maybe the other people I'm not carrying along okay. is the constraint. So the first thing, the golden rule in managing whoever we think is a difficult boss is to understand that person. What is this boss's need? What is this, the common complaints about so this boss? Understanding is the key. Understanding is the key. Empathy. All right, All right. so we're out really out of time at this point. So okay. we'll thank you very much, Abiola Chamsalami, for talking to us. Thank you for having me.